disruption, disruptive technologies. These words may embark fear in our hearts. For some of us, it may even be a little bit more discouraging to hear those words. The very fact that disruption and disruptive energies can wipe down the entire industry that we are aware of is unnerving. But fear no more, because I'm here. <laughs> what if I told you that rather than being avoiding disruption, we should forcefully inject that into our daily lives? Rather than avoiding disruption, we should be more accepting of it. Because only by then, we have something to look forward to. Let us travel back into the time. In the 20th century, America saw the mighty power of great people, great entrepreneurs, whether it was Carnegie, Rockefeller, J.P. Morgan, or a few others. They dominated the entire industries. They dominated banking industry, they dominated oil, steel, and variety of other things that we need in our daily lives, something that we cannot live without. In other words, they bring the value to the table. They created something big that was virtual monopoly. They build the legacy by design. However, this is 21st century and things are changing. And we now have a very whole new breed of entrepreneurs that are doing things differently. They are not only establishing their legacies and their successful companies that are going to dominate the next decade for sure, but they are doing it by legacy, by disrupting the design. That's how they are making a legacy, and that is the difference. We now have the world's largest e-commerce company that doesn't own a single piece of inventory in their warehouse. We now have the world's largest hotel provider that does not own any equity or any hotel rooms. We have the world's largest taxi company that doesn't own a single taxi. And maybe soon, we will have the world's largest currency that does not reside in a single bank within a country. And to my crypto lovers, yes, I am talking about bitcoins. <laughs> Things are changing, and they are changing fast. About 800 million jobs will get eradicated by 2030, all because of automation, machine learning, and AI. Disruption is coming, and it's coming really quick without us even being aware of it. So what can you do when you go home today? How can you hedge against the disruption in whatever field you are working on? I propose to you a simple exercise. It is called My Disruption Canvas. Make one for your own when you go home. As we go through My Disruption Canvas, I'd like you to pay close attention to green arrows and white arrows. The white arrows are mere fact of life. The green is when disruption happened in my life, which were really beneficial to me. And you will see that as we go through this. So as most of you know, my name is Ravi, and I was born in a small city of Rajkot in India, on the western India. Now, I put this under white category because I was just born. I didn't have to work for it. <laughs> it just happened. It's a way of life. But I did tell you to avoid. You need to get born, so don't avoid that. But after that, try to avoid white arrows. The next arrow was green for me. It was a disruption. And that's when I moved to Daytona Beach, Florida, to pursue my lifelong dream of becoming an aerospace engineer and learning more about aerospace engineering. And I call this a disruption because before this, I would have never left my state by myself without my parents. And now I find myself in a transatlantic flight that will take 25 hours, take me to a whole new world halfway around the globe in front of different people, different culture. And that was a big disruption, but I had to do it to pursue my dreams. After that came a disruption when I had to move to Dallas, Texas. Now, by this time, I was already considering Daytona Beach as my second home. I was becoming stagnant to Daytona Beach. There's nothing much to do there anyways. But, <laughs> but I got my internship offer, and that's when I had to forcefully apply to an American driver license. And when you are not from the United States, and you buy a new car, a foreign driver's license, 
and the foreign rules of driving, the I-95 doesn't look that simple anymore. <laughs> my scariest ride to Dallas, Texas, and I had a few more important questions in my mind. Is everything that big in Texas? <laughs> I got the answers to that, but that's when I got my first disruption view and see the whole American economy working for a corporate company. The next disruption came when I had to go to Palo Alto, California. Now, disruption can be physical or mental. Now, by this time, I knew what different states in the U.S. looks like, but move to California wasn't a big deal. But the field that I was studying at Stanford was different field than what I studied back at Embry-Riddle over in Daytona Beach. It was a mental disruption. It was me opening towards a whole new field to understand it and meet a wide variety of people to be make me become a better person, not just in my field. That was a mental disruption. So if you get a theme, I'm trying to make a point to allow disruption in your life. Because if disruptive companies can wipe out the jobs of the future for our own, we may apply the same principle to our lives so we can hedge against those risks and probably take a benefit of all the disruptive technologies that is going to change our lives. Moving forward, this was the white part, and that's why we are here right now. Savannah, Georgia, that's where I am. And I put this under white part because of the fact that I'm working as an aerospace engineer over here, and this is simply a fact of life. You get education, and you go and work for a company. That is supposed to happen. There is nothing disruptive about leaving a state to move to other state for your job. This is not a disruption, unfortunately. But at this point, majority of us stopped in our lives. We don't move forward than this. We don't allow disruption. And when we do this, we become stagnant. And if you look what's happening to those disruptive companies, they are coming. They are coming in big. 800 million jobs are at risk. So I purposefully inject disruptions in my life, because I like to be uncomfortable, like that video, apparently. <laughs> so I joined Toastmasters International. Now, as our introducer introduced, English was my third language. And I don't know how I survived that 20-hour flight. I wasn't that good with English back then. But Toastmasters allowed me to become a greater public speaker, because what's the number one stereotype we have about engineers? That we all sit in a dark room, and we're introverted, we don't talk to anybody, and I wanted to change that in order to get the idea forward. It needs to get disrupted, and Toastmasters provided me the opportunity to do that. The second disruption was me learning about a very important skill that governs our life. Very important street. By this time, I would be in the U.S. for seven years, which I think is enough to see most of the main street in the United States. But I didn't know one of the most important street, which is called Wall Street, which basically governs all of our lives. Any company you work for, everything gets affected by Wall Street. So I started investing into individual stocks, learning more about the quarterly earning reports, and now I can suddenly take the advantage of disruption because I would invest in a disruptive companies. Everything changed from that perspective. Now disruption is no longer the enemy. But I would like you to be careful when you deal with Wall Street. This disruption can only happen at certain points in your life. If I wanted to do this while I was a college kid and only had budget for ramen noodles, <laughs> that's, uh, that's hard to do. So make sure that you introduce right disruptions at a very right time, when you have enough capital. I then wanted to see a very promising world of a startup. So I founded a company that can actually disrupt an entire industry. Not something that I learned at school, being an aerospace engineer, a totally new field. Because when you do that, when you take that employee mindset and remove all the benefits the world looks very different. You get a startup founder, and when you do that, it can also make you a better employee, doing a lean approach to everything that you do. Cryptos, we are back to cryptos. 
This was an important skill to learn because by no means my school education allowed me to be a better cryptocurrency trader. But I learned it because that is the new disruption coming in into the financial industry. And when I learned more about it, I started to get more interested in it. And believe me, it works really different than Wall Street. It is a total tectonic shift to how Wall Street trades versus crypto trades. That was a disruption. You see, all these disruptions in my life, I'm introducing purposefully at the very right time to make sure that when the real disruption comes, I can be ready. What's future? Maybe pursue an MBA, see how the business side of the thing works. I know how technical, like the technical aspect works in a business by now, but maybe an MBA. What's the idea to take away from this day? Is disruption is coming, and it's coming in big again, 800 million jobs. When humans identify ourselves, we introduce ourselves to somebody by saying our fields. We say words like, I am a doctor, I am a lawyer, I am an engineer. But once that entire field, if it gets wiped out by disruption, we may face severe problems of our own identity. And the good thing to do is make peace with disruption, as seen in this picture. It's a robonaut, it's actually a real robot, at a space station, handshaking the astronaut. We make the peace. So in 20th century, people made legacy by design, but now the 21st century will belong to legacy by disruptive design and people who disrupt. Thank you.